My Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And his bub, William Frawley. Keep them off the streets. Okay, Douglas. Come on, Trisha, I'll buy us a soda down at Kimbrough. Oh, Andy, is this yours? Oh, yeah, we all get helmets and shirts. Doesn't he look dashing? <laughs> Some car with no motor. Hey, well, who's talking? You got a motor with no car. When's the race, Andy? Uh, three weeks from Saturday. Boy, you should see the prizes. Look at that. That's just for winning here. Then you go on to the All-American in Akron. I'm going to build a real car. If yeah. your dad ever lets you. Uh, now, uh, you see, this design I'm working on here calls for five bulkheads with nose and end pieces. Then, of course, uh, the steering mechanism is here. What's this? Oh, uh, this is the wire that... Uh, I could build a better racer than this with my eyes shut. Why don't you try shutting your mouth instead? <laughs> hey, what you doing? You'd look wonderful, Robbie. Give me my helmet. Let's, let's go over here, Trish, where it's a little more quiet. But this is how the car's gonna look when it's finished, you see. I'm, I'm gonna have the wheels here and everything. I'm gonna sit in here. Uh, Trish, just give I me know, a ring when you've had enough of the kidney garden crowd. Bye, Robbie. <laughs> Bugs are in the steering mechanism. That's right. We've run three tests. All three ended up in the too far zone. We don't usually go outside for help, but frankly, our boys are stumped. Take the job and you can have anything or anyone you want. All you have to do is ask. The sky is slightly beyond is the limit, huh? Exactly. Uh, there'll be a competitive firing in three weeks. Three weeks? Big government contracts the prize. We hear one of the other firms, Astral Aircraft, has a hot one, so the pressure's on. The question is, do you want to be part of it? Well, your offer's very generous. Oh, the money's good. But you'll earn it. If you save us a $2 million investment. How about it, Steve? Well, three weeks doesn't give us much time. But we can try it. Mr. Rankin, you've hired yourself a consulting engineer. What a mess this room is. Now look at these nibs here. Come on, get out of here, Tramp. Get off of there. What are you trying to do, ruin that good chair? Get out of here. Well, when Dad called, when did he say he'd be home? Well, he just told me not to worry. So it looked like he was going to be bunking in with that missile thing for about the next three weeks. Bob, could I have a $10 advance out of the household money? $10? Are you kidding? No. <laughs> $10. I, I gotta build a racer for the soapbox derby. And, and you're not allowed to spend over $20. I figure I can do it for less. Yeah, well, do you know $10 is a lot of cabbage? Yeah, well, first prize is a $5,000 scholarship. We can't afford to spend time duplicating earlier mistakes, so I, uh, I called this session so you could brief me on what you've already tried. Okay, sure thing. Now, as I understand it, in each test failure, the missile trajectory followed approximately this line of flight. Uh, that's close. Now, we can give you fractional variances from launching to destroy order. 
It looks to me as if the variance is immediate. Well, yes, sir. In the last two test flights, we tried to compensate for that wobble, but uh, no luck. All right. Let's give ourselves something to work from. Let's call this the ideal trajectory. Did you say this was the brakes? No, that's where Mike stepped with his traction. What are these things that look like croquet wickets? Those are the bunkets. You just fasten them to the floorboard, and that gives you the frame. Where do you get them? Well, you can build them. I hey, want. Get off of there, will you? <laughs> Jeez, darn dog always messing up things. Hey, I don't need that pen. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Trap. Well, I know Mr. Rankin said spare no expense, but some of these prices, like this beryllium compound, can't you use something else that wouldn't cost so much? Sure, I can use something cheaper. If you want to take a chance on pouring a $2 million investment down the drain. But $102,000. Hello. This is Douglas. Oh, you found him. Put him on, will you? Hello, Miss Thompson. This is uh, Douglas over at Independent. Yeah, say, we have that uh, bit of yours on that uh, beryllium compound, and we feel it's a little out of line. Yeah. Sure, I know we're asking for the impossible, but is that any reason for you to make a fortune on us? Just because we're in a bind? <laughs> Look, Mr. Thompson, I know about what your costs are, and uh, $90,000 would give you a pretty good profit, wouldn't it? Okay. Okay, Mr. Thompson, you have it here by Monday, and we'll guarantee you a reorder up to 150000 Hundred and fifty thousand. Seventy-five cents. That's the best I can do. Seventy-five cents for a couple old rusty barrel hooks? Seventy-five cents for a quality barrel in A1 condition. Thank you to leave it. Hey, sir? Um, I could maybe pay fifty cents. Seventy-five. Mr. All I need are the hoops. To get the hoops, you gotta buy the barrel. Five cents? Seventy. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Thank you, sir. Hey, are we gonna have room for it there? Well, the specifications say we have. <laughs> we better have it. Huh? Well, hi. How are things going? Well, so far, so good. We're ahead of schedule. We're about ready to install the new oscillator. Here's hoping it gives us the accuracy we need. I thought you were sold on it. Oh, I want to be. We just had word from a friend of ours who saw Astral Aircraft's new missile tested. He says it was sensational. They used an entirely new approach. Oh? Well, of course, that doesn't mean it's any better than ours. It's just different. Different from what? From Andy's. Hey, Robbie, you gonna go down to the park and watch Andy? I'm busy. He's testing his racer on the track. So let him. What's so different about mine? Well, well Andy sort of goes like this, and but then his back end comes like this, and um, of course that doesn't mean his is better. Well, I like your racer, and, and I like Andy's too. Well, I built mine the way I wanted to. Besides, what can I do about it now? Are you telling me you want me to throw out this design and try to duplicate some steering mechanism you've only heard about? Look, we've got some film on the test. It might be a good idea for you to take a look at it. Mr. Rankin, I've been working practically three shifts a day trying to adapt a mechanism I inherited. Now, if you don't like what I'm doing or you want to bring in another man, oh, you can Oh, come on, we've ahead. got all the confidence in the world in you and what you're doing. Oh, sure, sure. Only you wish our missile were more like the one Astral Aircraft's built. I'm sorry, Steve. We're all under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Come on, let's take a look at the film. Well, if you really want to see Andy's test, I could use a few laughs. Honestly, Robbie, I don't really care. Well, we might as well give him a chance to show us how great he is. Sure, and it might be fun knowing what you're up against. As long as we don't see something that'll make us feel like throwing in the towel. OK, we're ready.
Somebody must have given him a push. <laughs> You're using something new. And something effective. This doesn't mean your system won't be just as good or better. I hope you're right, Mr. Rankin. Because with time running out, we have no other choice. We're stuck with it. Well, you're calling the plays, Steve. Mr. Douglas, we're in trouble. What's the matter, Douglas? You look worried. Yours is a lot better, Robbie. Bet this pin will all peel out. And this is only cardboard. <laughs> hey, look, he's only got junky old wood bulkheads. What's the kind you're supposed to have? Uh-uh, Robbie's are steel. He made them out of barrel. The bulkheads have to be wood. Says who? Look, right here. Says make bulkheads of wood only. If you got steel bulkheads, they won't even let your heap on the track. Gee, Robbie, that's a shame. Quinn's right. The oscillator doesn't fit. Who wants to be in that dumb old derby anyway? Can't you fix it? I went over and over these specifications. I thought I'd cover every possible end. We can still make it, can't we? I'd have to tear it all apart. Do the whole thing over again. You know the company's with you 100%. We'll give you whatever you need. What are you talking about? Nobody can help me. That's the whole deal. You, you gotta do it on your own. The rule book says so. It's got to be so long and so wide and so high. There can't be any springs or no fenders or no glass and about a million other clunky rules. Only a dope like Andy would remember them all. Maybe I could help. Can you give me six months to do a decent job of researching this project? Can you give me some 48-hour days? Or how about a new nervous system or a good night's sleep or a, a meal I've got time to enjoy? Or an evening at home with my kids? No, Mr. Rankin. Those blank checks you keep handing me can't buy what I really need. And I can't give you what you really need. Why can't a guy build a car his own way? I'm sorry. I told you to get yourself another engineer. You did. But I thought feeding the one we have was more to the point. <laughs> what you doing? Water in the bushes. This is a hose. I just water. Oh, I thought this was Robbie's job. Well, he's sort of busy, and I didn't have anything else to do, oh, so I watered him. I see. <clears throat> Think you can finish in time? Well, he's still got three days. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Douglas. <clears throat> well, aren't you all set? Douglas, I, um, uh, well, well, no matter how she behaves tomorrow, I just want to know it's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Quinn. Um, good night, sir. Good night, Quinn. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Astros' new steering system isn't as accurate as we thought. The missile's point of impact was just inside the eastern circumference of the target area. Not bad. We'll do better. Attention, please. Now preparing for firing. The independent four. Attention. Uh, attention, please. The driver. Robbie. Oh, Robbie, isn't it exciting? We're going to leave that clumpy old man in about six Robbie. behind. <laughs> hey, they're calling for you to load up the cars for the next race. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Okay. Thanks a lot. No, 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 Trap. You'll have to stay right here. We don't want you on the track chasing the cars and barking at people. I'm sorry, but you'll have to stay here. Good luck, Andy. And good luck, Robbie. Say one thing for her, she doesn't play any favorites. Uh, drivers in their cars, please. Excuse me, Andy. Drivers in their cars. See you down there in the winter, sir. Stand by, please. Stand by for the countdown. Here we go. Destroy the independent four. Repeat. Destroy. Well, he made a darn good try. Robbie, I heard about the Derby. 
Bob told me on the phone. I'm sorry. Tell me about the missile failure, too. Sorry. Yeah, I guess we're, uh, we're about the two sorriest fellas around. Hmm? Didn't I hear Dad's car come in? Yep, he and Robbie are out in the garage feeling sorry for each other. Well, you can't blame them. I guess they both had a pretty rough day. Yeah, but they'll feel better when they dig into this prune fluff cake with O'Casey's angel hair frosting. <laughs> you know, we just get such great results working uh, working alone. Just think what we could do if we worked together. Mm. Gotta go into business. Call it uh, Failures Incorporated. What they need is a good laugh. Now, I heard a story <laughs> the other day about two ostriches. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> we had to have a slogan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about, uh, why succeed when you can fail? See Douglas and Douglas. No job's too easy. Yeah. Budget terms. <laughs> well, Rob, let's go in. <laughs> Can't even do that. Why succeed when you can fail? Congratulations. Thank you. about the two ostriches that decided to... Well, what are you laughing at? I ain't even told the story. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, will ya? Anyhow, these two ostriches were... Now, uh, doggone it, will you quit laughing so I can cheer you up? What's so funny about two ostriches? My Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And his bub, William Frawley. Do you have to do that? Do I have to do what? Follow me. Well, what do you want me to do? Jump over you? Hey, stop it now, fellas. Why do you two have to argue all the time? You threw the paper, Dad? Can I have the paper when you... There you go again. What do I do now? You do everything I do. That's what you do now. Hey, will you cut it out? Yeah, I'm still working on the sports section. You can have that part of it. I just want the classifieds. What can I read? The funnies. I already read them. I thought I heard Robin Hood's Band of Merry Men. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. ha. yourself to the galley and doing some of your chores. Fresh coffee, Steve? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, maybe a half a cup. All right. Classifieds? Uh, what are you looking for in the classified section, Mike? I'm looking for a way to earn a little spending money. Uh, what'd you do with the spending money I gave you last night? Well, I spent it. So are we gonna get some extra spending money? I'm gonna get me a rubber mouse, some yellow yarn. What are you gonna do with the yellow yarn, Chip? With a kitten. What kitten? The kitten I'm gonna get with the extra spending money. What extra spending money? The extra spending money you said you were gonna give us this morning. Oh, no, 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 you, you misunderstood, Chip. You got your allowance the same as Robin Mike did last night. Oh. Yeah. You wouldn't know an odd job if it was staring you in the face. Oh, yeah? I could get a job just as easy as you. Why are we all so cheerful this morning? 
Oh, just because oh. I'm looking for an odd job, Lame Brain here thinks he wants to, too. You mean work? Well, sure. Yeah. You guys must be sick or something. There's nothing wrong with me. A little money wouldn't cure. Money, 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 money. Is that all you fellas ever think of? Well, you gotta have money to do things. Did you ever think of doing something for somebody sometime just to, well, to be doing something for somebody sometime? What do you mean? We do lots of things. Sure we do. Like what? Well, uh, uh... <laughs> well, helping's all right during the week, uh, but this is Saturday and I need money. Yeah, this is Saturday and tonight we need money. Da, 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 da. Well, why don't you butt out, little Sir Echo? Oh, boy! One of these days. Just, just one of these days. Just one. Oh, darn, Mike. Man. You can get yourself a clean towel and start on these. Oh, I'd like to show that, Mike, just one time. Morning, Bob. Hi, Harry. Hi, Rob. Mr. Curry. What's new? Oh, nothing much. The same old grind. Hey, Harry? Mm-hmm. Um, you know where I can get some little job of some kind? You've got some little job of some kind right here now. Wipe those dishes. I mean to make some money. Money, money, money. Hey, uh, let me see. Jensen's fence needs painting. Jensen's? Boy, you said it. Shame to let a place run down like that. Oh, I guess it isn't easy when you're living on a pension. Douglas, eh? Stephen Douglas's boy? Yes, sir. And you know I'll do a good job because I need the money back. That's fine now. Oh, Sarah! We're gonna be late. You'll find the paint back there in the garage with the brushes and the rags, too. Oh, Sarah! Coming! Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Jensen. By the time you come back tonight, you won't even recognize the place. Good boy. Why, hello there, Robbie. Hi, Miss Jensen. I'm gonna paint your fence. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> He's a real go-getter, that boy. Just like his paw. Mr. Jensen. You know, you never look prettier. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. What's the matter? I was just talking to Robbie's brother on the phone. Well? I told him he could paint the fence. <laughs> That's nothing to worry about. Well, won't it cost twice as much? No, we're paying them by the hour. They ought to finish in half the time. Might even cost us less with the two boys working together. Well, that's real nice. My Steve Douglas is a lucky man to have two boys working together, side by side, yep. hand in hand. Brotherly love. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. That's my job. Yeah, who said so? Mrs. Jensen said so. That's who said so. Oh, yeah, well, Mr. Jensen Mom, said so to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You missed me. Yeah? Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. count. Who said? I oh, said. No, oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You're not gonna paint this fence. Yeah, you wanna make a bet on that? Mrs. Jensen gave me the job. I don't care job. what Mrs. Jensen said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Big yeah, Mrs. Jensen, yeah, while you go yeah, talk to Mr. Yeah. Jensen. Hey, hey. You squirts quit arguing. What? Yeah, well, we're working. Yeah. So go play somewhere else. Miss Foster said to stay close by so she could keep an eye on her. And I'm spending the day at Huey's. And my mom had to go to a ladies' club. Okay, okay, then go play at Mrs. Foster's so she can watch you. She says you're too noisy. Oh, well, she's right. <laughs> Only she's getting paid to listen to you, and we're not. So go play someplace else. We're paying. Can we help? No. no. We've got as much right here as you. Yeah, it's a public street. Out, out. Public boy. Yeah, public street. <laughs> public car. Boy, what a bunch of babies. Well, uh, that's the nice thing about growing up. You can settle your problems without fighting. Well, the way we have. Right. Those two kids are always arguing about something. Well, uh, you want to take the front or the back? Of course, uh, if you take the front, you have to be careful because that's the side that everybody sees. Huey! Boy, I never Chip. acted like those two, did I, when I was a kid? Huey! Chip! We'll split 50-50, and you can have the back. Here, shake on it. Shake on what? Well, let's get started. Get started on what, Mike? Now, listen, Mike, this is my job. Well, a deal's a deal. Deal? What deal? <laughs> Look, I'm, you're asking for it, Mike. I'm going to knock your you head clean off. You're paying Jensen's fence, Mike? Oh, uh, 
Yes, I am, Mrs. Foster. What about my brother's helping me? Helping you? That's real life. Hey, you and Grace see spruce enough. Poor old Mr. Jensen. Oh, boy, Pete! Hey, hey, come on, you guys. I told you we were working on what I did. Hey, come on. Get out of here. We got you. Huey, come on. Get out of here. Chip, will you get out? Chip! Come on, Mike. They're painting Jensen's bed. Yeah. I mean, I'm painting it. Hey, darn it, Mike, that's my paint. No. That's your paint. What are you talking about? We weren't here, Nathan. Well, we're sorry, to we got our brother Your mama mama left some sandwiches and a big pitcher of lemonade in the refrigerator whenever you and Chip get hungry. Okay. Look, this is my job. I found it first. You found it first? What do you mean? I talked to Mrs. Jensen on the phone what and she gave the job. What matter You're going to sand mean... before you paint, aren't you? Sand? <laughs> sand? Well, you know my husband. He says you always have to sand before you paint. Oh, um... Well, Mr. Jensen didn't mention anything about sanding. Besides, we don't have any sandpaper. Yeah. Oh, we have some I can let you have. Huey! <laughs> Huey, go look in the garage and bring that package of sandpaper, will you? Okay. Well, uh... This, this fence is no worse than our garage, and yeah, we painted that without sanding. Well, I don't know. Hal always says what's worth doing is worth doing right. How are yeah, you guys but... doing? Or I should say, who are you guys doing? Hi, bud. Hi, Mr. O'Casey. Hi, Mrs. Foster. Been to the store? This is the second trip today. The way these guys eat, we might just as well set up housekeeping down there in the parking lot. We couldn't find the ground paper. Great. Oh, well, let's go. Hey, yeah. you guys, where'd hey, you get this paint? Hey, wait a minute. Paint? Now, listen, Mike, you, you... Where'd you get this paint? <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Jensen had it in his garage, but Mike's been trying to muscle in, and how muscle am I supposed... Did you strain it? Find these paper cups. Do we have them? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I'm sure we have some sandpaper somewhere. Hey, let's go get some more stuff. Did you worry. look in the... Hi, Mr. Kincaid. What's the trouble? No trouble. Jensen's are getting their fence painted. About time, I'd say. Don't start painting yet, boys. I'm going home to see if I can find that sandpaper for you. What kind of sandpaper? It's a brand new paint, Bob. Yeah. Why should it need to be strained? Cheesecloth can be used for something like this, or a piece of window screen. Clean screen, of course. Or even a, an old lady's stocking. <laughs> I, mean, I mean a lady's old stocking. <laughs> what are you using for thinner? Fine, medium or rough? Gee, medium, I guess. The kind Hal always uses, you know. No good. Not for this kind of work. Hal uses it for everything. Well, what they need is a good rough sandpaper for that old fence. Well, just look at it, bub. It doesn't need thinning. Yeah. Well, sure, it looks all right now, but how about later? What do you think, <laughs> Casey? Oh, hello, Kincaid. Howdy. Now, go on. Tell Mrs. Foster you can't use a medium sandpaper on a fence like this. You listen, Miss Foster? Well, if we were in the Navy, I'd have them scraping it. Scraping it? Yes, sir. Even if you are my grandson, the Navy comes first. <laughs> Better get the paint. Wait, this is my job, Mike. I can't even use medium All right. sandpaper. Job. All right. Be rough sand. We're not adult enough to work out our own solution, then uh, let's leave the decision up to the grown-ups. I'm sorry, Mr. Kincaid. I don't see how you can find fault with my sandpaper when you haven't even seen it. It isn't fair. Now, look, if you're going to do a job right, what's the sense in not using the best material you can get? Our sandpaper is far from cheap. Mr. O'Casey, you've known Hal for years. Why, he's not cheap in any way. Why, he'd give you the shirt off his back, wouldn't he? Why, sure. I was just telling Hal the other day when I called for a clean sweep down, four and a half, they hold did on, it. There, now, now, hold on, hold on. You're all mixed up. I'm talking about sandpaper, not people. Oh, well, well there on Street has like sand, or, you know, uses this. But he doesn't use a fine sand. Oh, it's a deal. Now, here, a shelf is not a picket fence. Is it okay, sir? That's right. Nowadays, the Navy. Sure, they do. When I was in the Navy, we had beans for breakfast every morning. Hey, see, the boy's got the job. Hi, Harry. Hi, Harry. Morning, Morning, Miss Foster. Hi, Miss Foster. Harry, Kinkett. what do you think about sandpaper? Go on, now tell Miss Foster. Yeah, beans. <laughs> Navy beans. Well, now, you see, that all depends on whether you're using an electric sander or not. And chip beef on a shingle, if you are lucky. <laughs> now, there's this fellow over on, uh, over on H Street. 
I forget his name. Well, anyway, he's got this electric sander. <laughs> you see, it all depends on whether you use Hey, watch it, will you? Sander or the Keep your hand off my side of the fence. You're ruining my paint job. Lemonade! Lemonade! Look, Mike, it wasn't your job in the first place, and I get stuck painting all the braces and supports, and you get the better brush. You only have to paint about as half as much as I paint as well as you gripe. You might do a pretty good job. Susie, Susie, come back here with that rake, will you? Every healthy wholesome Mr. Kincaid here. When I was in the Navy, you lived out of your sea bag, and that was it. Mr. Kincaid. Hey, boy, where's that lemonade? Here. Oh, anyway. That's seven cents, Mr. Well, I was just saying. Regulation gear only. Everything's squared away. Dressed blues and undressed blues and whites rolled and secured with clothes stops. No Irish pennants. What? Of course, you could always use paint remover. Too expensive. Blowtorch be the best thing. Have to be careful, though. Might burn the whole fence down. Well, that just doesn't seem possible. Certainly it's possible. Just like setting a match to it. Now, of course, I'm not saying you don't have to be careful with paint remover, too. Why, you know, one spark and kaboom. Seven cents, Mr. Just like oil. Now, when I was stationed on a tank... Well, Rose and Jones, it just doesn't seem possible. Why, Foster, how in the world are you? I haven't seen... You and a month of Sundays. Well, I think about you all the time. Hal and I were talking about you just the other night. Oh, well, now that's real sweet of you. Yes, and I saw Della Buchanan at the post office the other day. Oh, how is Della? Well, she was asking me how in the world you were, and I was so ashamed because I just didn't know. Well, well, I, I think it's a shame we never see each other, living on the same block and all. I was saying exactly the same thing to Wilma Ramsey. Well, how is Wilma? She has a new dining room set. Oh, no, I mean her hay feet. <laughs> Seven cents, please. Yeah, can I have another one of those sandwiches? I got one for 15 cents. 15 cents? The last one only cost me a dime. Seven cents, please. Seven cents. And if you think duty on a tanker is a snap, you've got another thing coming, mate. Why, heck yes. And it wouldn't be the first town that burned the ground that way, either. Well, when I said the smoking lamp was out, it was out. Why, one more spark and... Seven cents, Mr. That's right. Look at the Chicago fire. Nothing left but a bunch of brick chimneys and foundations. Of course, it's okay now. Well, see, the Jensen's are finally getting their fence painted, huh? Darn it. Hey, boy. Here. Well, thanks, Mr. Kincaid. And keep change, keep change. Gee, thanks. Yeah, old Mr. Jensen's been telling me he wanted to fix a place up himself, but his arthritis just won't let him. Well, I've been trying to get over and help the Jensen's, but I just don't have the time. Mm. You can't smoke cigarettes on a U.S. Navy tanker loaded with 100,000 gallons of gasoline. Right. How about that fire up at Cedar Grove last year? One careless smoker and a thousand acres of timber up in flames. Well, the way the population is growing, there soon won't be any timber left. There's more people than trees now. You can have this one for half price if you let Huey and me use some of your milk boxes. But talk about things disappearing. Sounds like a pretty good deal, Chip. If you want to worry about something yeah. giving out, how oh, about boy, coal? Come on, hey, be sure you put them back now. You can replant timber, but it takes millions of years to make coal. Sure. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that I had a girl in every port. But I remember one time in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Oh, were you in the Navy? Well, of course, Fern's tied down. What does she expect? You can't have three babies in four years and not be tied down. Well, I, I feel sorry for Fern, but, but I got my own worries. Want some chairs? Well, thank you. Ten cents, please. <laughs> Isn't that cute? My tree. Oh, well, that's awfully nice of you, Verda. I Thank don't you. know what to say. Oh, my. <sighs> I haven't sat down all day. And I shouldn't be doing it now. Hal wants an early dinner, and I haven't even... You haven't even made my bed. And if I don't get those curtains back on the window, Hal's going to have a fit. Oh, I know. 
Now, could you sit down and relax for five minutes? Well, that's just you, my point. Just... See, coal and oil are not growing things. It takes millions of centuries for those uh, giant ferns and uh, prehistoric animals and stuff to uh, rot down into a bunch of carbon and, uh, and uh, decompose into uh, coal. And, uh, and we're using it up overnight. Oh, I know. You don't just take your pick and shovel down to Okie Finoki Swamp and stand there and wait for it to turn to coal. It takes time to decompose. That's right. And everybody knows about it, too. But why don't they do something about it instead of just talk? Talk, talk, talk. That's all anybody ever does. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> Mother never lifts a finger with the washing. You know what she said to me. She said, Boy, talk about your great moments of history. Yeah, every guy at the plant stopped dead in his tracks. Well, you could have heard a pin drop all over town. And wham, all right over the left field wall and four runs across the plate. Well, on the plant. That was a pretty little blue eyed darling. She had a dimple right there, deep as that in her cheek, of course. That's right. And the weather's not like it used to be, either. Hotter in the summer and cold in the winter. You don't see girls like that anymore in the movies. Get your own gun tomato! Yeah. And how about food? We had a peach tree on our place. Used to give peaches that big. Juicy, sweet. Uh-huh. And remember uh, Billy Dove and Leatris Joy? <laughs> Sugar was bitter compared to them. What's the matter with you? My bird of Foster. I never said my mother was a burden. Lillian Gish in Broken Blossoms. Mighty sad. What the heck are you talking about? That's the first decent game he pitched all season. Oh, yeah? Looks like you painted it with your eyes shut. Well, I'll have you know I get a lot of compliments on that dress. And it was far from cheap, too. Only three cents a pound. Get your banana squash. And drinking water. Don't know how long it's been since I've had a good cup of drinking water. Boy, talk about excitement. That was the greatest series I ever played. Of course, the whole thing was rigged. Rhubarb! Fresh rhubarb! Well, my mother said that if you don't make her stop sucking her thumb, she'll... End up on a pension like the rest of us. I guess some people just never learn to keep still. Silent movies were better than talkies. Talk's cheap. Yeah? Well, put your money where your mouth is. People should just keep their opinions to themselves. And in my opinion, look, buddy, Everybody's got a right to his own opinion. Well, she had two stitches taken in. William S. Hart. Watch foul. Tonsils. St. Louis cards. Raspberry. Penicillin. Diapers. Toronto maple leaves. Tomatoes. Celluloid collars. Nazamoba. Diapers. Asafetida bags. Barra Kimball Young. Diapers. Horse and buggy. Cincinnati red leg. Pola Negri and Cedar Barra. Oh, my gosh. Hell's home. Be right there. Oh, Berta, don't tell me it's that time already. That can't be right. Yeah, looks about that time. Okay, Edna, be right over. Boy, I better be getting that truck back to the dairy before they send the police out for it. <laughs> Man, thanks a lot. I'll have to make tracks if I'm going to get those short ribs done. Yeah, I don't have time standing around here. Got my own lawn to water. Well, I'd sure like to give the Jensen's a hand, but I just don't have the time. I know what you mean. You know, there hardly seems to be time enough nowadays to help yourself, let alone helping others. Here's this here, Mr. King Thank you, Harry. Hey, Chip, you fellas get those boxes back in the truck. Get home in time for dinner. Yeah, it's all set, Harry. All right. Hey, Bob, hop in the truck. I'm going right by your place. Thanks, hey, Harry. Polling meets Tuesday night. You going to be there? You betcha. Nice talking to you, Casey. I'll be seeing you, Kincaid. Take care of yourself. Yeah. After all, Roseanne, we deserve to treat ourselves to a good time once in a while. That's right, honey. 
And I don't mean the drugstore either. I mean a nice cafe where we can have a really good lunch. Sure, we'll put on our print dresses and get all gussied up. We'll show them. We may be married, but we're not dead. Die in the Navy. Why, well, I've worn out more sea bags than you have socks. Mrs. Jensen said to ride out the bill, slip it under the door, and Mr. Jensen will drop the money by our place around dinner time. Looks pretty good. Yeah, that's what I call a bunch of good neighbors. This make you happy? Yep, that makes me happy. You know, that paint job changes the look of the whole place. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think I am? What do you, did you do that for? What did you do this for? This was by What do you think I am? I've been in the face with this. You think I'm a canvas or something? I mean, I get painted over there and I get painted over here. What about this? Well, well I, I was by accident. Hand. You did this by purpose. <laughs> Well, how did our uh, two money grabbers do today? Well, I've never seen two happier pirates in my life. They're upstairs right now getting dooted up to go out and spend the loot, yeah, I guess. I suppose. Where'd they make their killing? Jensen's over on uh, Maple Street. You don't mean old Carl Jensen. Yes. You mean to tell me they took money from them? Why, those poor old folks haven't got enough. Well, don't to... jump on me for it. I tried Mike? to tell... Mike! Robbie! Come on down here. I want to talk to you. You two gangsters better get down here. Your no, dad's home. No money. It's all late. Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Oh, come on, Robbie. Cut it out. I'm not following you. I'm just walking behind you. I gotta get down some way, don't I? Well, walk in front of me. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for telling me. Yes. Goodbye. Uh, well, did you, you call us that? Yeah, that was uh, Mr. Jensen on the phone. Oh? He was telling me about that envelope you put under his door. Well, what's the trouble? Yeah, well, what about it? Well, all I can say is I don't think you fellas are going to get very rich by uh, writing no charge on your bills. Well, we, uh, we couldn't take money from people like the Jensen's. I'm glad you figured it out that way. It was a darn nice thing for you to do. And besides, it was kind of fun. Of course, we're just as broke as we ever were. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, Dad. Uh, how about uh, doing something for somebody sometime? <laughs> yeah, just to somebody for something. Or just to, for somebody, sometime just to do something for... Dad, how about loaning us a couple of bucks? There you go again. I was just about to say that same thing. What do you mean? How am I supposed to know what you're going to say every well, minute? why don't you listen? Look, like I got my own thoughts, too, every time I... <laughs> well, like I was saying, every time I say something, you're always a good 